morning, good afternoon, depending on where you are. I'm Emmanuel Gant, Senior Analyst at the World Trade Organization. And I'm Dipesh Patel, Editor at Trade Finance Global. Welcome to the launch of our revised periodic table of DLT projects in trade. This new publication updates the original periodic table of DLT projects in trade that we launched last year in December 2019 at the WTO Global Trade and Blockchain Forum. This new publication is the result of a joint collaboration between the WTO, myself, and Dipesh Patel of Trade Finance Global. I also would like to thank John Denton, Secretary General of the International Chamber of Commerce, and WTO Deputy Director General Zhao Zhongyi for having signed the foreword to this edition. Now, no doubt that the world has changed a little bit since we published our first periodic table last year. The COVID-19 pandemic has shaken the world, threatening the lives and livelihoods of millions of people in both developed and developing economies, with a particularly devastating impact on small businesses. But it has also accelerated digitalization efforts in all sectors, including international trade, which, as we all know, remains plagued by labor and paper intensive processes that are the source of many frictions and inefficiencies. So we saw banks, for example, going digital. They expanded digital channels. They expanded the use of electronic signatures and e-documents. They put in place new business processes and controls. So where do we stand when it comes to DLT projects in trade? Now, a year is an eternity in the world of technological development. And we felt it was important to see how the landscape of DLT projects in trade has evolved since we first published our periodic table a year ago. Now, from the outset, the periodic table was never designed to be static. We chose this design for several symbolic reasons. First, because the periodic table simultaneously represents tracking similarities and distinct differences. So on the actual periodic table, you may have hydrogen and helium next to each other because they are most similar in terms of mass but the two remain radically different when it comes to features like reactivity. Likewise, on our periodic table, if two projects are positioned close to one another, it does not necessarily mean that these projects can be considered similar across every dimension. Now, another reason for selecting this design is its presupposed intention to grow and morph over time. The very first periodic table of elements that was developed in the 1860s was made with intentional blank spaces that would one day be filled with elements that were predicted to exist but were not yet known. And this is also how we envisaged our periodic table of DLT projects and trade, as a momentary snapshot of the current industry landscape that will change over time. In fact, this year's periodic table does look quite different from last year's. So, what's new? Firstly, we adjusted the categories around slightly. One of the most tricky challenges is always to fairly categorize projects into differentiating seg segments. We divided the projects into seven broad categories, supply chain finance, SCF, trade finance, insurance, know your customer, shipping logistics and supply chain, digitalization of trade documents and trade processes, as well as, as well as other projects such as marketplaces. So supply chain finance, in the original version, we featured various supply chain finance projects which leveraged DLT. The new revised periodic table still includes that SCF category, but it doesn't list specific projects. This is because it's quite difficult to provide a comprehensive and up-to-date picture and the initiatives within the sector are increasing fast. Of course, this doesn't mean that DLT-based solutions for SCF are unimportant, quite the opposite. DLT is vastly interesting for SCF as it, as it addresses many challenges faced, not the least of which is greater transparency of suppliers' operations. Many SCF projects also go beyond merely SCF to address other issues. For example, Halo Trade. It's adopted a multifaceted approach, tackling not only supply chain finance, but also issues in relation to sustainability. Link Logos, another SCF initiative, 
branches beyond the first tier of suppliers that SCF typically looks like, and instead also seeks to target suppliers of the supplier in their model of deep tier supply chain financing. Then there's KYC. A section of KYC projects has been included in the periodic table. It's important to note that many initiatives that are classified as trade finance DLT initiatives will comprise a KYC element in their service suites. In the table, only those projects that have explicitly have blockchain powered KYC modules as a secondary function have been indicated. This decision has been made also to simplify the already complex visualization of the project ecosystem. It's also important to note that there are a number of national KYC initiatives that have not been included in the periodic table. These initiatives include NABU and Bahrain's blockchain national eKYC platform, which is the first national scale eKYC initiative in the Middle East and North Africa region. So what have we found? The number of projects has increased significantly from 29 last year, excluding supply chain finance, to 44. Some of the projects that were profiled in the original version have fallen aside, whilst others have emerged. A few, like Contour, previously Voltron, have progressed from being a consortium to becoming an incorporated legal entity, enabling them to provide the full commercial services that they were previously unable to provide. Similar to the previous edition, each project is presented with its underlying technology, as well as, as well as our evaluation of its current stage of maturity. Next up, most of the projects have progressed. Overall, we found that the industry has made steady progress towards trade digitalization, with the average project moving from a maturity stage of 2.3 out of 5 to 3.3 out of 5, with one representing the proof of concept POC stage and five representing live and running or well-established. The maturity indicator is represented by the circles shown in the bottom left corner of each project in the periodic table. It's also important to note that this publication is merely a representation of the industry as we know it today. There are likely more projects that we are not aware of or do not have enough information to include here. We invite anyone with knowledge on projects like these to reach out to us. We look forward to hearing about new and innovative solutions to the issues plaguing the industry. It's also important to note that similar to the previous edition, will be, the, will be primarily focused on the digitalization side of DLT in trade, examining how it can be used in pursuit of the digitalization of trade documentation, digitalization of trade processes, and the exchange of trade data. So we don't cover track and trace projects, even though they're a very important aspect of the broader industry. Now, an important observation that we make is that customs developments are trailing which is bad news, I would say. Trade digitalization relies on the development of end-to-end -end solutions. And any digital process will only be as strong as its least digitized link. So for international trade, this means integrating customs. This is critical. Several governments are testing or considering using DLT for their customs operations in single windows, but most projects still remain at a conceptual or piloting stage. The most advanced project appears to be Cadena in Latin America, which focuses on the issue of mutual recognition of authorized economic operators. We also flag in the publication a handful of other proofs of concept and pilot projects involving customs, such as the NAFTA CAFTA proof of concept that was run by the US Customs and Border Protection Office, or the EU Digitaxud ATA Carnet POC that was conducted by EU Digitaxud with the International Chamber of Commerce a few years ago, or the Korean Export Clearance Project and Shanghai's Single Window Project. However, many of these projects either seem to have made limited progress or have not made any indi indication of the progress known either to us or to the public. So we do not feature them in detail in this revised periodic table. Now, the good news is that things are moving. Various customs authorities are now integrated with the TradeLens project, 
And there are several other DLT digitization of trade document projects that are integrated with customs. And one example is Avanza Innovations, which has been integrated with Dubai Customs. While these are significant positive developments, it is not enough. More needs to be done in this respect. We need to start seeing more movement along this front if we truly want to digitalize international trade. Now, a new section on standardization initiative was also added in this year's publication. This section provides an overview of projects that work towards creating digital standards relevant for trade to drive digital interoperability. These standardization initiatives play a crucial role in shaping the future of trade digitalization. Because end-to-end -end trade digitalization can only happen if an ecosystem that allows for seamless exchanges of data between existing platforms is in place. And this requires developing and implementing globally accepted digital standards for trade. There are several initiatives in the broader trade area that are working towards creating a set of standards. Some of these are focused on particular sectors or geographies, others are more general. Some are being spearheaded by large international organizations, others by private companies. Now the graph you see on the screen provides an overview of some key standardization initiatives relevant for trade to drive digital interoperability. And the study includes a short explanation of each individual project. Last but not least, the study also showcases the results of a supplementary survey analyzing the impact of the COVID-19 pandemic on the projects featured. So to gain a detailed understanding of the impact that the global pandemic has had on DLT projects in trade, we conducted a supplementary survey of projects featured in the 2020 periodic table update. As part of the survey, respondents were asked, were first asked how the COVID-19 pandemic has impacted their DLT plans and activities. In accordance with other studies, in particularly the ICC Global Survey on Trade Finance, we find that the vast majority of firms have experienced a positive benefit to their DLT plans and activities as a result of the pandemic. Without the physical presence of staff, due to work from home orders in many nations around the world, banks and corporates have been forced to produce rapid digital solutions in order to remain operational. In many instances, this was best done by scaling up existing digital solutions. Whilst many DLT solutions may not have been directly impacted as a result of COVID-19, the progress made on the implementations of supporting technologies has had a clear positive implication. We also sought to understand the various challenges facing DLT firms as they try to scale up their solutions. It's interesting to note that legal challenges were rated as posing a more pressing challenge than any of the other challenges. This suggests that the largest current challenge facing the deployment of DLT solutions across the industry relates heavily to lack of legal clarity and enabling regulatory framework that firms face. If the industry is to transition successfully into a digitalized world powered, in part by DLT, Regulatory development needs to keep pace with technological advancement. Governmental authorities and policymakers around the world need to begin addressing the historic and often wildly outdated laws that are burdening those seeking to guide the industry into the near future. Thank you very much for listening. We invite you to read the white paper that is now available on the WTO and TFG websites. Thank you. Bye. Thank you.